let's welcome the last speaker of the day. And this is Mateusz Nowak. Now, he's a software engineer, mostly focused on low-level stuff, so firmware, drivers, etc., but also uh, focuses on training other people, both in technical and soft skills. He's interested in C++, motivation, and teamwork organization. Now, the reason that Mateusz decided to join, and it's his first code dive, well, the first reason is he said, you know, he likes large audiences. <laughs> Who doesn't? The second one is that, you know, the talk is being recorded, so then when he comes back home, he will be able to watch himself and the large audience on YouTube. And also, uh, last but not least, uh, he says that uh, we are the first conference who accepted his talk outside of his own company. <laughs> So Mateusz will be explaining to us what happens when you hit error, memory is not aligned. Once again, Mateusz Nowak. Hello, uh, warm welcome for all of you. I see there are a lot of people in the, in the room. Uh, thank you very much for this, uh, since it's last speech today. Uh, as it said, uh, I will uh, talk a little about uh, memory alignment and uh, things related to it uh, in C++. Uh, as you may have noticed, I'm working for Intel. I am a software engineer there, uh, working on audio firmware and some different things like speaking here. Uh, the agenda will cover two things. First of all, it will be uh, what is alignment and why do we care about this? Uh, and then more technical stuff about enforcing alignment in C++ and possibly in C, because it's quite similar in some, some aspects. Uh, main rule is that the Q&A will be at the end, uh, but if you see some error uh, on the slides, please raise an issue so we can quickly fix it or uh, talk a little bit uh, about this. Okay, first part, what is alignment? When I try to explain to my colleagues how the things work in C++ or, uh, or any other technical uh, topics, uh, I'm always trying to visualize this, uh, and I will do the same in this case. Uh, I'm not an uh, expert in painting or in doing images, uh, but I hope the ones will uh, tell you more or less what it's about. So first of all, uh, let's have a view on uh, memory. Uh, being some wardrobe with some spaces of more or less similar size uh, that can transfer to uh, in our computer memory into bytes or words or whatever size of the uh, slot we have p p available. And usually, we don't care about this. We put our objects uh, in a way that they are put by default. So if we allocate the memory, we don't care where it is, where the object lies, and how large it is, how much space it covers. Uh, but sometimes we need the shelves to be of specific size. So all the objects we create are contained in specific aligned uh, uh, size of a shelf. So in this case, we have three slots for each shelf. And no matter what object is there, every object uh, has to fit in those three slots. In some cases, when we need to put larger objects than those three slots, uh, we merge two shelves and leave more space at the end, still aligning to those three slots. The other situation happens, and it, it's usually when we do some register mappings, is uh, packing. So we have some three slots aligned storage, but we put two objects in the one uh, shelf. So we pack them to fit uh, the whole available area. 
in addition to this visualization, we also have to know some default rules for alignment. First of all, we have fundamental alignment, uh, which is default alignment for any object or uh, type in C++. And what is important here is that it might be different depending on the context. So if we have single variable of type S, for example, uh, alignment of the type of this variable may be different than if we are uh, having uh, the field of this time in the struct, because the context may force different alignment. Other, another thing is uh, adding uh, padding at the end of the each object to make sure uh, everything is aligned correctly. So uh, after, I don't know, our, our uh, field of struct S, we have some extra space added. So the next object in the structure, next field in the structure also will be aligned correctly to the alignment of this field. And in the case of alignment, we also need to remember the fact that uh, uh, computer architecture usually forces some alignments. Like, I don't know, in PCI, everything is read in uh, 32, 32 bytes. So it has to be somehow aligned uh, to this size. And when the alignment may matter? Uh, there are some possible situations. Uh, I listed some of them. First of all, uh, specific CPU instructions like SSE that are uh, aligned always to 128 or, or double of this size. Uh, this may matter when we are sharing data between CPUs or, uh, in general, different computing domains. Uh, this may matter when we have to explicitly flash or invalidate cache because we have to be aligned to cache length size. As I said earlier, it may matter for hardware register mapping, uh, especially in case of packing. And sometimes it may matter for per performance where we uh, are looking for uh, microseconds uh, that are used for cache uh, flash invalidation, and if the data is properly aligned, we may save something if two objects are not going out of the uh, range of the cache line. As an example, of, of course. Now, when we more or less know what is alignment about, uh, we can deep down d uh, go look more into how it can be enforced. Uh, what are different tools and uh, methods available in different uh, C++ standard to forcing alignment. First of all, for a very long time, we have compiler-specific attributes. First two, uh, being uh, responsible for forcing alignment. Uh, in this case, it is quite fortunate they can be applied in similar uh, way for, uh, for in most cases. So we can, if doing some uh, cross-target programming, we can hash define them and use uh, common, uh, common name for them for different compilers. Unfortunately for packing, uh, it is quite different because GCC and c still have attribute and for Visual Studio, we need to somehow change the context of the code by pushing or popping uh, pack value on the interpreter stack. Then, in addition to those attributes, we have uh, s functions that are specific to compilers or in general, libraries used uh, that we use. That are uh, those are uh, in some cases tied to the compiler or operating system. First of all, uh, we have POSIX MemAlign, which is uh, POSIX standard, available in GCC and C Lang under Unix uh, based systems or Linux, etc. Then we have MMMalloc and MM3. 
being exported by Intel libraries. You may notice that uh, there, there is a separate uh, free function here. In previous case, it wasn't there. Uh, because uh, POSIX memaline mem uh, is done in a way that uh, makes the free detect if the memory was uh, allocated aligned or not and behave, uh, behave basing on the allocation. So uh, the memory has to have some state behind so the, uh, so the free of the memory knows what happened at the beginning. Uh, and we also have for uh, Windows and for Visual Studio uh, aligned malloc and aligned free. Uh, apart from the accepted types, they are pretty similar to the Intel uh, ones, but as you can see, they are quite different than POSIX memaline in case of parameters, in case of how the memory uh, allocated is returned. That also can make some trouble if we're trying to do some uh, cross-compilable uh, libraries, for example. Fortunately, with uh, C++11, uh, we now have a few constructions, a few language constructions that are helping us to enforce alignment. Unfortunately, I haven't seen none for packing, but uh, for this, we have still to use uh, the attributes that was available, that were available pre uh, previously. So we have, uh, sorry, so we have uh, three things here. We have align us keyword that uh, helps us uh, define alignment for type or object. So we put it uh, on the struct definition to make the struct be aligned to 16 bytes or put it on the variable definition so we this uh, buffer will be aligned to 128 bytes. Then we have align off and stood alignment off that are working basically the same. I believe ali stood alignment of is defined uh, uh, in a uh, basing on align of, uh, and those are for querying the alignment of the given type. So we can ask for align align of of uh, char, or uh, align of some structure. Uh, with C plus plus seventeen, we have some helper not to write. Uh, value or uh, operator parenthesis, just simply alignment of V. And then as a bonus, at least in GNU compatible compilers, we can also query uh, alignment for the variable of our uh, struct field. Uh, as far as I remember, Silang wi will complain that it's GNU extension and you have to silent the warning uh, ma manually. But we need to care about some things we are using aligners. There are some, let's say, issues, maybe not. Uh, some things to watch about. First of all, it applies only to the type, most outbound type. So if we are uh, trying to, we are putting aligners before vector, before container, we have to remember that only vector uh, will be aligned, so memory uh, needed for, for the vector, but all the elements of the vector won't be aligned and it won't, this alignment won't populate further. The same goes for pointers. Pointer memory that keeps pointer will be aligned, but then uh, the very uh, allocated memory that is assigned to this pointer will be not. Also, if we are doing some uh, cross C, C++ libraries or some data sharing between those two, uh, we need to remember that uh, C defines align as a little bit different. Uh, it has underscore a big A and then call aligners. So uh, for such cases, we need to either uh, define ourselves uh, aligners, starting from small letter, or include stood align.h 
to have exactly the same defined uh, variable. The next thing is uh, similar to containers, aligners does not apply to fields in the structures. So uh, if we want to have every field in the structure aligned, we have to manually put aligners on every field of the structure, and then everything will be uh, aligned to the value put there. In other case, only the whole structure will be aligned, nothing more. Next uh, function, next, next feature available in C11 is uh, student line. Uh, this allows to obtain aligned uh, pointer to the aligned buffer from the other buffer. So we have some, in this case, uh, buffer aligned to 32 bytes that have a size of 160 and extract sub buffer from it that will be aligned to 64 bytes and have the length of 128. Uh, what is important to remember here is that std align will return null pointer in case if new buffer does not fit uh, the old buffer, the, the buffer from which we are extracting. Uh, so all the parameters, so the extraction of the sub buffer has to be possible for this function to succeed. We also have uh, stood aligned storage with C11. Uh, it is somehow like uh, stood array of bytes, but with alignment. Uh, we, sorry, uh, we can define and, co and compile a time the size of the container, the required alignment, and then use it then cast it to desired types, because as I said, it will be of type std byte, in fact. In this case, we are using it for SSC computations that require four floats uh, to be, f uh, the memory to be aligned to four floats because each operation is, is uh, working on four, four floats. What is important also to remember here, especially in case if you are uh, working with uh, Visual Studio compiler, that you have to manually set the uh, enable extended aligned storage uh, flag since Visual Studio 17 version 15.8, because uh, in previous versions they had a bug uh, that made it not work if uh, the alignment given was larger than the maximum possible alignment. Uh, and fixing this bug would cause binary incompatibility between versions, so they decided that uh, by default it will work the faulty way, and if you want to have the correct uh, behavior, you need to set the flag during compilation. And it is uh, the flag in the build system, so you cannot do hash define and now enable extended storage, but you have to set this in uh, your project options. Then, uh, since C17 uh, includes C11, we have a standard defined aligned alloc function that is uh, defined to work the same way as POSIX mem align. So uh, uh, it, uh, it, uh, is the memory is uh, freed with free. Uh, and it has the requirement for the size to be a multiplication of alignment uh, alignment value. So in all cases, uh, we can use some helper function that will calculate the proper size to be passed to aligned alloc, uh, basing on the size we require to allocate. Uh, some compilers allow also to use it if we are not strict al uh, about uh, uh, language version, for example, my GCC 6.3, if I remember correctly, uh, also allows to use this function. But it is probably the only feature from C17 that is not implemented in Visual Studio 
version 15.8 because as far as I know, they are claiming to fully support C++ 17 now and be the only compiler to support this, uh, ex except for this function because it's not compatible with, with their memory model and it will be too troublesome uh, to make the free properly free for uh, malloc's and from aligned alloc. So they just decided not to implement it and not to support it. Okay, once we know the aligned alloc, we can find some way to use it. And it will be custom allocators. The previous talk was a little bit more about the allocators. We here we have the simplest one allocator that we can possibly define. So it has uh, a value type, type depth. It has some constructor, some copy constructor, and uh, being friend to very self, and allocate and allocate functions. And also comparators between uh, allocators, so, so we know that uh, to align the allocators with, oh, I made a mistake here. Don't didn't fix the type name, sorry. Uh, the two custom allocators, uh, not matter what template time is used, are the same. And how we can use this to force alignment? There are possibly some different ways to do this. One that I will show is just simply uh, giving the constructor uh, a parameter that uh, will uh, define al alignment that is supported by this allocator and use it uh, in allocate function. In this case, we are using align alloc. For Visual Studio compilation, we probably has to switch, have to switch to uh, version supported, uh, function supported uh, by by, by this, that compiler. And for the allocate, we just simply do free, and also we have those that helper function to calculate the proper size uh, for the align alloc. And we do some type define uh, for being uh, to being uh, compatible for with further examples in, in the slides. So. We have some usage, usage examples of such aligned allocator. First of all, we have a vector that is uh, allocated in data region with uh, those that aligned allocator. So whole data will be aligned. But again, we have to remember not every element in this vector will be aligned. We have an example uh, with string, to string being uh, actually defined as a basic string of charts, chart rates and the allocator. So if we switch the third template parameter and then pass it, uh, pass it to, to string constructor, uh, we it will be using, it will be allocating its data uh, using this aligned allocator. And also we can use this the same thing for any structure of any types that we want to uh, using uh, placement new. So uh, we uh, just uh, put in parentheses the call to the allocate function. Uh, and it uses this memory to, to construct the object. The thing we have to remember about in this case that if using placement new, we always need to explicitly call the structure and then free memory. Uh, it the structure won't be called in this case uh, when doing delete. Okay. So how can we go further not to remember every, every time to call the destructor and then de deallocate? We can define our custom deleter, uh, being in this case structure that uh, has reference to our allocator. Uh, so it can probably be used uh, uh, f globally somehow uh, for our allocation delocations. Uh, and it has defined operator parenthesis, which is doing uh, destruction and the allocation. 
Uh, custom deleters also comes in hand we are when we are, we are using unique pointers. So in this case, we just uh, define uh, our deleter as second uh, template parameter for unique pointer and uh, pass the instance of the deleter to the uh, as uh, parameter to, to the unique pointer also. And to shorten this a little, we can define our own make aligned uh, unique that is using uh, this deleter all the times or do some more generic version that will accept any deleter. It can also be uh, some std function or some lambda, things like that. Not necessarily the struct with uh, operator parentheses. Okay. So we are pretty happy because we found a way to make our unique pointers aligned. And then we uh, come to the place when we have a unique pointer of array. And it happens then if we, uh, if we do it the same way that we were doing with uh, unique pointers to single object, we will fall into the trap. Because unique pointer does not keep the information about the length of the array that is allocated and uh, Manage about this unique pointer. So we have to find some solution how to uh, how to fix this situation, how to make it work properly, how to not destroy only the first element in the array because effectively it will happen. First of all, we can uh, use uh, the feature called std bind, and when defining our deleter, in this case, uh, it is. Uh, a function object or a lambda, uh, we can uh, give this deleter a second parameter that is telling us what is the size of the uh, array to be distracted. So we loop all through all the elements in the array and then through the whole, whole region. And uh, then we bind the second parameter to the size of the array and it works perfectly fine now. Okay, so it is the first option. The second option is to have some deleter instance that accepts uh, the size of the array as a parameter. So we pass the size of the array to, to this deleter and then in the end, uh, when the operator parenthesis is called, it behaves again properly by destructing all the elements of the array. The other option uh, that I, uh, when doing this originally, uh, found or thought of is uh, defining your own uh, custom structure that mimics unique pointer behavior, but keeps the uh, information about the array, and I called it array pointer. Uh, in addition to the parameters that a unique pointer accepts, so to the pointer of and to the deleter that is to be used in this case, it also accepts the size of the array and uh, uses calls the proper deleter which, which knows about size on the structure. It also is not copyable, it's movable, so perfectly fine as unique pointer and have some operations the same as unique pointer. So how to use it? We can now either use this function object that we have previously or define some uh, structure that will accept, we will have parentheses operator that will accept the pointer and the size of the array. If we defined, uh, which we have default parameter for the size, in this case one, uh, we can perfectly. We are perfectly fine to use the same deleter for for unique pointer. So uh, it will manage to to destroy only single element. So we save one structure for doing these things for our all unique pointers and array pointers. Okay. Uh, I was was once asked uh, why use uh, 
such thing, such array pointer instead of std vector. Uh, and the things that I thought of and I think of still, there are two things. Uh, first of all, explicit control over memory block size. So we allocate memory and keep it stored unique in unique pointer. We don't have some over allocations or additional initialization if needed. And also clear ownership uh, of the buffer because the rules that holds for unique pointer still apply. So there's single owner of the of the of the data. There are possibly some more. I believe they are the same or more or less the same uh, when the uh, debating if you use unique pointer of array or vector of t. It's matter of the situation or choice or who wants to use what and what fits best uh, given situation. Going back to the new features in new standard uh, versions, with uh, C++11, we now have some standard defined defined that is called uh, std cpp default new alignment. Uh, that value uh, holds the alignment that is by default used for constructing new objects. Uh, we also have things uh, similar to placement new or possibly using the same uh, call uh, construction. This is called uh, aligned new, so we can pass std align value t uh, as a parameter for, for new, and it automatically with will call operat operating new that is uh, uh, allocating aligned memory. Uh, and in addition to this, we have flags in compilers that are controlling the, the behavior, so we uh, those both are enabled by default if we uh, are switched to Stud C17. Uh, in Visual Studio, we have ZC Aligned New, uh, which allows us to disable the behavior if we want to uh, not have Aligned New available. In GCC, we have flag that, first of all, allow allows to disable the behavior, and uh, secondly, allows to uh, override default alignment. So if we want to have everything aligned with given alignment, let's say, I don't know, we cry or our memory buffers to be aligned to 64 bytes, we can do this by simply uh, setting this flag. The problem with aligned new is that uh, delete goes somehow crazy uh, in this situation. Uh, let's say we have some structure defined that has uh, operator new, operator new with alignment, and some deleter, uh, some operator delete, and we allocate the memory with alignment and try to delete this. Uh, what will happen here? Here will happen that the uh, operator delete with without the alignment uh, attribute will be called because it does not know that the memory was allocated aligned and does not know that it has to call the proper deleter. So if we thought that in this case uh, the um, aligned delete will be called, it won't. Uh, the same goes if we define uh, explicitly uh, operator delete, aligned operator delete for this uh, structure. Uh, how to resolve this? How to make this work correctly? We have to explicitly say that we want to call operator delete uh, with given alignment value. Uh, those global scope uh, markers are not needed uh, because if we don't have them still, the global will be called. It won't go to the uh, custom deleter, uh, delete operator. Uh, or we have to explicitly call uh, operator delete with alignment on the object. If you want to select the uh, over override or custom operator delete with alignment, so uh, you need to be especially careful in this case when using this feature, because even if you uh, define your class properly, uh, may not work as you expect because the user has to be explicit uh, on what she or he wants to use. Okay, 
Uh, and the last feature I will be talking about is PMR, or polymorphic resources on memory sources. I'm, as a firmware developer, doing uh, things that usually require some memory buffers and being, uh, being taking care of the allocation, etc. Pretty excited about this. Uh, it's unfortunate that, as far as I know, it's only working in Visual Studio for now. Other uh, compilers, other systems does not support it yet. Uh, or does not just support it yet fully. Uh, in this case, for PMR, we can define some uh, buffer of bytes. It does not necessarily has to be an array, it just to have be some, uh, can be on free store, uh, just has to be of type std byte. And pass it to a buffer resource with the size, defining that we fall back into null memory resource that is uh, making uh, allocate throw an exception if uh, the space if the buffer is uh, uh, there's no space in the buffer to allocate new objects uh, or new objects when you are trying to do so the default fallback is to go to back to free store so if we don't set the last parameter uh, it would always work but allocate for free store uh, then we use it for synchronized pool resource, and uh, in the end we use it for a uh, vector, which is doing all the allocation from the pool. Uh, what is remember to, uh, important to remember here is that if we would do std PMR vector of std string, only memory for vector will be allocated from the pool. Uh, string would be would allocate by default, so from Freestar. We need to be explicit that we uh, need PMR behavior for the type inside of the container. Uh, the same goes from custom types and other types. If we want PMR them to be PMR supported, we have to explicitly implement this. And how the alignment comes here? Because it's just PMR buffer uh, or PMR resource used here. So, oh, not this way. We can also define our custom memory resource that will accept, say, upstream a resource that it is using under, uh, under to allocate memory. Uh, then implement uh, PMR memory resource uh, uh, interface functions, so do allocate that is already giving us alignment attribute, uh, uh, alim alignment parameter. So any PMR class const uh, or container will already ask for alignment if using PMR. And what if we want to uh, override this default alignment? We just uh, choose maximum va value of the alignment do allocate request for and alignment we provided for construction of our uh, aligned resource because it is required that alignment is a power of two. We can just simply do such thing. And then we call upstream resource or the one underlying to, to allocate the memory with the alignment we want to do it so with. The same goes for do the allocate and we also need to implement uh, do is equal which is comparator between uh, memory resources. In most cases, it will be just a copy-paste, so uh, you don't have to create anything special. It should look more or less the same in most cases. Kay, as I said, that was the last thing I, was I had to talk about. So I uh, uh, thank you for, for, for your attendance. If you have more questions, you can ask me, catch me on LinkedIn or via mail, and I do appreciate every feedback. Also using the uh, code dive website because then you can write, write the, uh, the, the H, each talk. And once again, thank you very much. If you have some question, uh, now it's time for it, or maybe some comments.
Questions, comments, sarcastic criticism. Yes, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for the talk. I was just wondering, could you give uh, maybe some example from your experience, in experience when you hit the memory not align error and which of the presented techniques you use to solve this? Oh, uh, unfortunately I cannot share any details because my work is confidential at the moment. Uh, but I use it uh, everyday work and uh, I used all the techniques that I was talking about uh, during the project. It's everything is from real life usage. Top secret work, how <laughs> cool is that? Okay, any more questions? Anyone? Yes, one over there, please. Uh, so, uh <coughs> you said that uh, for the data in vector to be actually um, aligned in the way we want, we need to pass the type with the uh, custom allocator. Uh, what do we do for the built-in types? Oh, uh, actually I didn't have such problem, but when I think of this, uh, you most probably would have to define some struct with alignment and then put the built-in types as a f one and only field in this struct to, to have this working. Uh, or if you are just using variables or stack, you can, you can just do align as, I don't know, 64 int s or something like this. But for allocating the, uh, for, uh, for, the, uh, for the containers, you would probably have to do some wrapping structure or something like this. Okay, thank you very much. Mateusz Nowak.